So welcome back to the Revit Project Tutorials uh, set 2. Uh, this is the third tutorial in this set. Um, now as you can see I've finished off uh, creating pads for my streets, uh, for paths and curbs. Um, I've also got pads for the adjoining properties and a small test one for our building. Uh, the topography in our site has been left alone. Um, now before we move on to floor types I just want to quickly show you how you can clean up um, the edges between your pads and any um, overlapping or overhanging topography. Um, it's uh, quite uh, simple to do, we just use the split surface tool, uh, the same one that we used earlier on. Um, so I'm just going to clean up this little bit and uh, I can do that by selecting the topography um, and going into the site. Um, actually, you probably don't need to select topography first. You can just call up the um, split surface tool, which is under the massing and site tab. Um, here it is, split surface, and then select the topography straight afterwards. Okay, um, and all I need to do is draw a line um, from the top of that edge right down to the bottom of that edge um, and then just finish and let's go back into the 3D view so it's split it for me and you can tell because there's no line um, no shading um, in that gap um, and when I select that little bit the other bits don't select as well so I can just delete it so using that same method you can clean up any topography um, along the edges um, of, the t uh, of the pads. Okay, let's quickly move on to floor types. Uh, now we have our pad here. Um, let's hop into the section for a second. Um, here's our pad. Um, now I'll leave the pad there because it's excavating into the uh, earth for me and I need that. Um, but I will uh, get rid of the uh, concrete material. Um, so let's select the pad, go into edit type, edit structure, edit material. Here it is there and I'm going to change it back to default which has no surface pattern and no cut pattern. Okay so that's what it's going to look like. Now I'm going to um, place a uh, floor element um, on top of this pad um, and that will represent my concrete slab. So this is the second method um, that we mentioned um, earlier. So the first method was uh, to convert that pad into a concrete slab. Um, this second method will use the pad to excavate into the earth but will uh, create a floor element um, to represent our concrete slab. Now if we go into the home tab, um, in the build panel uh, you'll see the floor tool. Now, if you click on the arrow right next to the floor tool you'll see a number of other floor tools there as well. Uh, we'll be touching on slab edge a little bit later. Let's click on the floor tool. Now you'll probably be prompted to go into a floor plan. Um, we're in a section view and you can't draw a floor uh, in an elevation or section view. So I'm just going to select the bar ground floor, that's where I want to draw my floor. Um, now we're uh, all greyed out because we're in edit mode, uh, so if I cancel out of that for a second um, and just see what I've got here on the screen. I can only see half of the streets and footpaths, um, I can't see the site at all and I will need, uh, need the outline of the site to be able to draw my floor. So um, if you go into the properties palette, um, and scroll down until you see a field called underlay. Um, in the uh, field right next to it, click on the drop down list and select your street level. And you should be able to see the pad that you created earlier. The reason why that's all you can see is the pad was uh, created on the bar ground level, which is a little bit higher than the uh, street level. Um, so uh, I can actually see anything on top of that street level. Now because pads are actually drawn um, just below a level, um, you won't be able to see all the other pads that have been created on that front street level. Um, to be able to change that, if you scroll down even further, you'll see a field called view range. Click 
click on the edit button um, and in the view depth change the view depth to unlimited press apply okay you should see that change in the background so now we can actually see all of our site and you can turn that off at any time okay so let's create our floor let's go back into the floor tool uh, we're in uh, sketch mode as usual and we can just draw the uh, boundary of our floor. I'm going to use pick lines because the lines are there already. Now I don't want that line, I want the line underneath it, the edge of the pad. So if I hover over and uh, click on the tab button on the keyboard and keep clicking on it, it'll cycle through any edges or any lines underneath my mouse. So it's a handy tool uh, to know. So here's the edge of my pad, that's fine. So like that, 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 that and that. So here's my floor. Now before we go on, uh, make sure that it's on the right uh, level. Um, we can edit the type but we'll do that a little bit later. Okay. Um, and press finish. So let's quickly go into our section again. Here's our section and you can see that um, here's my pad but here's my floor sitting on top of it. Okay, so let's go back and edit that floor. So I'm just going to back into the, select that ground floor plan and edit boundary. So this goes back into the sketch mode and allows you to change um, not just the profile of the floor but the properties of the floor. Now, um, if you look over to in the properties palette, we can see that this floor is uh, of a type called generic 150 millimeters. If we click on the edit type and edit structure, you can see there's no material attached to it and it's 150 millimeters thick. Let's cancel out of that. Now, we want to create our own floor type here. So we need to, once again, duplicate this type and then change its properties. So let's press on the duplicate and let's name this uh, ground floor slab so let's say it'll be a concrete slab press OK here's my new type um, now we can edit uh, let's make this uh, 300 thick or oh, actually probably a little bit too thick I'll make it 200 uh, because we will have a slab edge a little bit later um, and in the material click on the category and I'm going to change it to concrete. Move down, press OK, 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 and finish. OK, so now we've created um, our own, let's select that again, our own uh, floor type. OK, um, and that was the generic one we had before. Um, if you click on that, you can see that there are other different types there as well so you can choose any one of these um, as well um, there's the timber floor one um, which could come in handy a little bit later for the second floor okay so here's our floor type uh, let's run into the section again um, we can see that there is a concrete material on that and it's sitting on top of the pad which is cutting uh, the earth for us. Now the next thing I'm going to do is create uh, slab edges for my floor um, and that's just thickened um, edges uh, around that concrete slab um, and we can do that by going into the uh, floor drop down list going into slab edge. Now we need to go into a plan view to do this so let's go back into a plan view and I'm just going to, oops, let's call up that tool again. Um, select the edges of that slab. Now you probably can't see what's happening underneath it, but if you go down in the visual styles and select wireframe, you'll be able to see that the edges have been created around that floor. Now let's quickly go into the section. Uh, where is that here? Um, and you can see um, the slab edge there um, and you should be able to see on the other side as well. So there's a little bit of it on the other side 
and if you hover your mouse over you'll be able to see that one as well. Um, now it is placed as a separate element to the uh, slab um, but it is um, uh, closely connected to it. Uh, you can see that by the line that cuts through it. It's not bold um, and the bold line actually wraps around the whole slab edge there. Um, now let's turn off that pad. Um, it's a little bit distracting so let's pull up the visibility graphics. Um, and the pads are actually located in the sites. Um, there's the pad. So uncheck that, press apply. Okay. So the pads have been turned off. Um, it doesn't affect the way the topography is being cut into, that still remains. Um, and we can see our floor there. Now the next thing I want to do is to join uh, both of these elements together. Uh, now I can do that uh, by going into the Modify tab um, under the Geometry panel. Um, first I need to unjoin the relationship between these two and then I'll join it up again properly. So in the Join drop-down list you'll see something called Unjoin Geometry. Select that and then select the slab edge and then the floor. If that works. So um, you can see that it's unjoined uh, because now the slab edge has crossed straight through the slab and we've got the slab uh, overlapping it. Now we can join it, join that and join that. And you can see that uh, what it's done is um, taken the line, the dividing line uh, between the two elements away. Um, now I do need to, as a final um, check to make sure that uh, the slab edge has the same material as this slab and it has no material at the moment. Um, click on the material and let's make this concrete as well. Okay, so now you can see that the concrete material is running straight through. Let's check the other side and it should be there as well. Okay, so let's go into the gravel. Okay, now if I grab that section line and just move it out a little bit further um, and just make sure that, okay, the slab edges are looking fine. Now that ends this tutorial on floor slabs types and edges. Um, now what you need to do is uh, go back to your project and create uh, floor slabs uh, for your building. So whether you have um, two buildings or one building or large building, uh, make sure you read the brief very carefully. Um, design your spaces uh, to what you like um, so that you have an idea of where to site the floor slabs and how big they are. Uh, don't forget to duplicate your floor uh, type and create your own um, and define the materials for both the floor type and the slab edges. Uh, the next tutorial will run through uh, basic external walls um, and wall definitions um, as well as uh, just the overall building envelope. We'll also have a very quick look at massing uh, for those who want to create forms um, that are non-standard.